So hello, welcome for uh, to today's webinar series, Connection Wednesdays. It's March 31st, and we are here with an exciting project uh, from Hungary for the, uh, the Hung Expo Arrival Hall. So um, all free welcome, and let's roll on. Um, it's me here today, and let me have the big pleasure to welcome our guest today, who is Adam Kish from Kish Romania, also cooperating with BIM Design Company. Adam, how are you today? Really good, thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> cool. It's great to have you here. Uh, Adam is, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> for me as well. Adam is, let's say, a, a rising star of a structure engineering in the Hungarian and Romanian region, <laughs> I would say, uh, but still a humble young man. Uh, Adam, would you tell us how long are you with uh, cash or in the business of structure engineering? Uh, yeah, I'm working around three, three years. I started my uh, uh, my work life, my my serious life, in uh, three years ago at Case when I finished my uh, civil engineering studies here in Cluj-Napoca, where I'm actually right now. Uh, because um, Case Group is is an international group, and Case Romania is a is a smaller uh, uh, group where I'm w working right now. I'm here in Cluj. Yeah. Good. And this is where you studied and got your degree as well, or yeah, yeah, in Cluj Napoca. Yeah, here I studied at the Technical University of Cluj. Um, uh, my I studied civil engineering, and after that, structural engineering two two years, which I finished last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and you are continuing with your PhD as well, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I also continued. I'm PhD <laughs> okay. the first year. Yeah, everything Great is new job. for me. <laughs> Great job, and we're wishing you luck with this. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your words. Uh, so let's continue. Uh, for those uh, of you that are new um, to our webinars, we use the GoTo platform, um, and you are muted by default. But please feel free to type in any questions in the question panel, and we'll try to answer them at the end of the webinar or uh, afterwards uh, by email. Um, so what's uh, in plan for today? We've got this exciting project. Uh, it's just going on, uh, and it's just under construction in Budapest. It's this uh, marvelous uh, arrival hall, the Hung Expo um, area, and Adam will uh, tell us uh, more about this in a minute. And let me introduce these two companies that uh, worked on this project and still are working on. It's a CAS group, as Adam mentioned, and BIM Design. These are both located in Hungary and partly in Romania as well. Um, so it's a pleasure and, and big thanks uh, for, to these companies that allowed us to um, present this project. So thank you very much and wish you uh, luck with futures projects as well. And in the second part, I will show you a little bit uh, of the uh, of modeling and, and discussion on models in Idea Statica Connection, uh, those that were used uh, in the project or designed for the project. So that's for the introduction. Adam, are you ready to tell us? Yes, of course I will show my screen in a minute. Mm -hmm. So I'll just switch the screens and we can also turn off the webcams probably so our attendees will have a bigger screen. So you see my second screen now? Yes, probably. now it's now now the screen is blank and now the PowerPoint is just yeah, and now it's the, the full presentation. Yeah, so, this is what I want, sorry. <laughs> no, <laughs> okay, good. I, at least I realize what I want. Sorry, this is my first webinar, and yeah, I'm a bit no uh, problem. new in this. Uh, okay, 
So what I was talking about, the general project information, which I just told you to you, were the uh, different participants. Um, the project itself, the design phase was nine months. We started in uh, last uh, uh, year's February, around February. Um, yeah, it was a lot of steel involved, around uh, 1,750 tons of steel, a lot of joints, around 22,000 uh, 2, pieces of joints in the facade and in the roof also. Um, I, here on my screen, you can see uh, the general, our general green process, how we handle this uh, project, how, we how the different uh, uh, programs uh, were uh, working together. Uh, the gen general parametric design was realized in, in Rhino uh, with a Grasshopper script. And uh, due to uh, Pangolin uh, 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 plugin, uh, it's, it's a Constil plugin, we realized the uh, connection with Constil. And uh, because Constil and IDEA has and already had their uh, really good connection between the two softwares, we, it was really quite easy to, to handle uh, uh, also the connection design. And uh, uh, the last step was to realize the Tecla model, the detailing model, which was fully parametric, no lines, nothing was uh, drawn by hand, everything was uh, generated by a parametric script. So this is in general, and uh, uh, now I would like to show you what we get. What was our first, uh, uh, the first design, the envelope of the structure that we get from the uh, architect. Here you can see uh, the, the the envelope, which is uh, 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 rotationally symmetric in uh, 120 degrees. It's a propeller form, uh, propeller shaped structure, uh, where uh, uh, the geometry of the sorry, the geometry of the uh, steel structure was adjusted basically to some fixed elements. Uh, the rotational symmetric edge curves, were, which you can see in uh, uh, blue, uh, also were symmetrical outer roof edge curves with different uh, heights along its uh, length, uh, which would be this green um, curve, and uh, the horizontal inner uh, circular ring. So um, this is this was the geometry what we uh, got, and we had to design the, the roof structure, the load bearing structure, and the facade also. Um, some other information about the, the project itself, some functionality information. It was uh, actually uh, it is the reception hall in uh, Budapest the, at the Budapest Congress and Exhibition Center, with office spaces mainly and showrooms. Uh, but the uniqueness of this facade is to is that uh, it is adapted to this three-level concrete support uh, structure, which has different floor areas. So it's it's quite a unique and uh, let's say complicated uh, geometry. And another thing is that the roof structure is uh, 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 it fits to a uh, spherical surface. So it it was another factor that is uh, complicated our job. Um, Okay, so we also get a preliminary uh, structural design from Hydrostat. This was uh, uh, the, the basic concept of the steel structure. Um, and uh, obviously we had uh, the concrete structure, um, let's say, fully designed. And uh, it became clear that we had to have this uh, parametric approach of the, of the structure because, uh, because else we, it, it's more easier to have... Uh, all the, ge all the ge geometry uh, uh, scripted to have uh, 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 everything uh, parametrically, to have all the lines and everything uh, driven by a, a, a script. So, for example, on my screen, you can see at the left side uh, uh, a basic uh, component which has all the uh, geometrical information, so all the geometrical data, actually, all the lines of the project and uh, all the uh, different uh, joints and curves. Uh, in the concept phase, we had to rationalize this structure because as you can see on the left side, it was uh, quite a, uh, uh, let's say, more complicated. It was, it, uh, was uh, quite um, mountability and the manufacturability of the project. It was, um, let's say, uh, 
initially uh, really uh, hard and we had to rationalize this uh, project. We had on the right side, you can see uh, the final approach, the final uh, design, what we uh, realized. And here you can see some uh, uh, other uh, structures. Actually, during our master thesis, for instance, we also were, were been working with my colleagues in these projects and we've been trying some other uh, geometries, the other segmentations. And regarding the segmentation, it was also important to ensure the, uh, not only from this designed approach, but also from uh, the um, uh, manufacturability point of view, it has to be, uh, it had to be uh, easy to uh, to resolve this problem. So we had a, a quite a few um, concepts, general concept, how we would segment, and uh, we finally we uh, reached uh, uh, the the final structure. Um, and the, in the actual design phase, the game changer was uh, the Pangolin uh, plugin, which is realized by Conceal because it became it, it was possible to to model all the geometry and uh, and not only the geometry the, but the full structural model the full uh, uh, analysis model here you can see an insight of uh, the script which uh, established the connection with uh, constil basically you can see on my screen uh, that we had these parameters the geometrical the load and every parameters after that we had this load ev evaluation phase uh, for instance the the wind load as uh, you probably uh, can imagine, it was quite a hard process to uh, understand uh, and to 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 use actual the code recommendations and everything. And after that, we had uh, the actual parametric structural uh, modeling, uh, the actual connection between uh, Pangolin and Constil. Uh, another picture about this. So you can see the same geometry in, in Rhino and in Constil also. Uh, regarding the load evaluation, I put some pictures here just to imagine how, uh, uh, let's say, difficult to, to understand what the codes are recommending to us if we have this uh, special case, if, if it's not uh, rectangular, if it's not a uh, geometrically good defined structure, it is hard to implement all these recommendations. But still, we tried. We also uh, uh, tried to use uh, CFD simulations for this project. And uh, we uh, realized uh, uh, to to have these wind loads, the final wind loads, you can see here the zones and how we separated the different uh, 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 wind surfaces. Okay, about the global structure analysis, obviously it was uh, fully uh, calculated in Constil. Uh, all the member checks and all the verifications was uh, uh, checked in Constil. And uh, after that, the actual connection design phase, uh, which we are here today, was another uh, difficult part because uh, the not because of the uh, structural complexity of the struct of the nodes mainly because only because of, of the topology of the structure because all these uh, star joints we call them star joints were quite uh, uh, difficult to uh, understand how how the uh, forces act on every member and uh, uh, how to calculate all the wells and all the bolts it, it was quite uh, difficult but with idea aesthetica we realized we had this main three joints that we uh, verified in uh, uh, IDEA, the base plate joints and the star joints. Obviously, we have a lot of different uh, topologies of the star joints because in some cases we had uh, uh, on the main beam, we had uh, four, five or maybe six uh, connecting uh, 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 members. Here you can see some general uh, uh, measurements of all this, uh, just to imagine uh, the, this type of connection. Uh, obviously, we also try to uh, simplify this uh, project, mainly at the roof, uh, because there we had the possibility to use Eurocode and uh, let's say basic uh, topologies, joints with basic topologies. And this is how we, uh, these are some uh, pictures from the roof. 
And after that, uh, the detailing we realized in Dexel structures, as I mentioned before, the full model was uh, scripted and uh, was uh, we had this live link connection between our Rhino and uh, Dexel model. Uh, the another different aspect we I would like to mention was the secondary structure uh, uh, where the different facade elements are supported it was also detailed fully in, in Tecla and uh, here you can see uh, some uh, let's say some uh, mainly it looks some complicated but it actually uh, here we have uh, the script which models the, the Tecla uh, uh, model uh, due to the live link and uh, the, uh, another pro uh, software that we used was Streamble Connect. Actually, it's a cloud platform because it made possible to uh, upload all the design phases and everything for all the participants of the projects. This is how we uh, could com communicate between us. It was uh, uh, a lot easier to uh, have some different uh, uh, conversations about uh, every topic not only with uh, uh, the fabrication, but also with the uh, reaction. And um, yeah, this beam model was uh, uh, quite an uh, uh, important factor of this project. Uh, I also bring some uh, photos about the fabrication. Here you can see uh, some uh, star joints uh, already realized, but before painting. Um, so as you can maybe imagine the size of the nodes, which is quite high. And uh, here you can see a, uh, uh, one of the trusses at the entrance. And another aspect that I would like to uh, mention is about the fabrication was that uh, because of this complex topology, we had to make sure that everything is according our design and everything is according our IFCs that we exported. So we, uh, in every case, we did this uh, uh, cloud, the point cloud uh, measurements just to, to compare with the uh, reality, and it was quite uh, easy to uh, to handle this uh, complete the complex topology. Also, some pictures about the pre-erection phase. Uh, here you can see uh, how the uh, uh, facade will look like actually and some pictures about the erection itself and this is a quite um, let's say um, i think it's uh, two or three months ago this is a phase, quite finished phase of the project but guys are still working about this so uh this is what i would like to show you about this project i uh uh really think that it was a successful project in the point of view of the collaboration, not only between us, the participants, the designers, but also between the, the uh, different uh, programs that we used, because um, I think uh, uh, as if we would uh, uh, do this job in a general or traditional way, nine months wouldn't be enough. So in conclusion, based on the, our project, there is a real potential in parametric design, uh, and uh, mainly because it, it's versatility, because there are a lot of plugins, there are a lot of third-party developers that are <clears throat> uh, currently and, and actually uh, uh, <clears throat> every day appear new uh, stuff, so it is a real good community. And uh, uh, the use of this parametric methodology is a uh, can be an advantage in actually every design process, also in uh, simple cases. And um, yeah, of course, there is there's a need of an adequate experience just to to estimate the degree of the efficiency that can be implemented. But uh, there are a lot of cases where it can be really useful. Um, I think this is all that I would like to show you today regarding our project and thank you for your attention thank you for your time 
Adam, thank you very much. I am I am absolutely <laughs> excited about this project. I have to re repeat myself because you have done really great job in the field of civil structure engineering. Um, thank you. I feel like this is kind of imagine a few years ago this this feels kind of like a science fiction but this is just happening today and this is uh, this is uh, yeah. the future today right and and I'm really pleased to 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 know this and to be uh to to have a chance to uh, you know, get in touch with this project and with you. Uh, Thank you. I, I'm interested how about the parametric uh, approach and all these software equipment that you used. Uh, this is still something new uh, in the field of structure engineering, um, mostly used for some very complex projects, some big projects from big companies, but you it seems that you you've you've done this like nothing just like on daily basis uh, can you tell us maybe how were you um and like did you take any special training for these softwares or tools or did you adopt it in some yeah. easy way yeah i i always been keen of uh, informatics and i always been curious about how to implement different uh, scripting techniques in in our uh, um uh, domain and uh, to be honest I started Grasshopper like two years or three years ago the first time I've heard was um, when I was still in uh, at the university and uh, we, we uh, were participating at a contest where we designed a, a it was a structure it was a, a small scale size structure for seismic mm -hmm. design and uh, mm -hmm. We also had an architectural part for this to mm -hmm. uh, to realize a skyscraper, let's say. And that was the first um, time that I heard, and I, I really know that uh, uh, we have to use this in in uh, in um, our daily life because if we have this kind of project, we have to be capable to uh, to uh, react on the the architects. Uh, needs and not only the architects but the uh, mm -hmm. those who are uh, yeah the beneficiaries so yeah mm -hmm. great there are a lot of opportunities in yes we can see this <laughs> brilliant uh, thank you very much once again um, I think we will hear more and more about using such complex um software combinations and parametric design approaches and yeah i hope so too uh, and yes and thanks I, I, thanks to your presentation you are uh showing us the right way definitely <laughs> well it's it's another way not definitely the right but let's say it's uh it's a thing that we have to adapt you know, and uh yeah i i just want to tell to everybody that uh, we have to make questions and we have to be interested because if we are yeah and there are a lot of uh, guys around the, uh, the world that we can ask and a lot of uh, um, um, a lot of domains not only architects but also structural designers in the past few years are working with uh, uh, grasshopper and with parametric design and mm -hmm. yeah I can tell that uh, you only need to ask so feel free to ask maybe me or everybody or anyone else who is uh, interested in the parent design but yeah I really recommend to, to use these techniques mm -hmm. yes so the society of structure engineering engineers using all these uh, extra tools is growing and that's good okay thank you very much I will now take the presenter and continue with my part uh, So I'll jump right into um, Idea Starica connection and say a few words about um, 
these details and these connections that you um, worked on within this project. So basically, <clears throat> you started with this. This is the uh, the, the complex star joint, right? With uh, the welding of tubes and the uh, end plates on the tubes as well. This is how you started uh, the design and how you started the code check and analysis of this detail. But you mentioned one thing that because you were not sure about uh, all the uh, variants of topologies and then internal forces and so on, even with having the software capable of processing such a complex details, you rather uh, you rather chose to split these detail into two to leave the star joint inside and leave the end plates as a, another model to better understand yeah. the behavior, right? Yeah, this was our final decision because at the beginning we started to to model and to analyze as a whole this uh, this kind of uh, joints, but uh, we realized that uh, we cannot really understand the actual work for the parts that we are. Uh, uh, analyzing. For instance, if uh, we are talking about the welds uh, at the middle, uh, it was enough only to, to see uh, 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 the, the parts, uh, so, so to have a, a, just a, a sub-model of, about the weldings. And after that, we uh, made uh, another uh, joints and other models to, to the uh, splice joints. So yeah, this was the, the main idea. So yeah, at the beginning we had this uh, full topology, but after that we split mm -hmm. this. Yes, this is this is a good point or good thought. So even if the software allows you to do kind of anything, it's still better to keep your um, to keep you on the ground and and always have the control of of what's yeah. going on and understand every every uh, step or everything. Yeah, that's, it's really that's, that's a very interesting point uh, that I like that you uh, went this way. So what you did is that you <clears throat> took this model of the inside of the star joint and here you were you focused on analyzing these um, weldings and this in, in all the variants of topologies of these star joints having uh, various numbers of members included uh, different angles of the tubes and so on yes. different lengths of welds so uh, here what I have I have just filtered all your models and, and kind of picked up this so <clears throat> here I'm showing you just uh, the, the members in Idea Sarika we've got uh, seven of them just one load combination uh, of internal forces uh, that were imported from the structure model in Consteel. And uh, this model looks very simple from the perspective. Yeah, yeah I have to mention here, sorry. Yes, please do. Yeah, I would like to mention here that it was quite easy to uh, export this joint from uh, Consteel directly. So uh, in Consti we had the topology, we had the geometry, we had all the uh, results, the internal forces uh, acting on the, the, the joint. So actually at this uh, stage we didn't have to, uh, let's say, waste time with modeling. So it was really easy to just to, uh, to verify all the topologies with this technique that we exported the, the joint, put only the cuts just to have uh, the weldings. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was really easy to... Um, Analyze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. This is, uh, I'll just show you quickly. Cut operations. This is a, a mitre cut operations, how we call it. This basically connects these two tubes into one continuous. There is a, a butt well inside, that's the yellow line. And then we have, uh, sorry, then we have just a standard. Um, fillet welds that would, with the cut operations, I would cut this tube and weld it to each other. And then you just copy this operation and you have in a, in two minutes, the model is finished. So then you can analyze this one, <clears throat> calculate it, 
and then uh, what you can do is to make a copy, for example, and slightly change parameters uh, in sake of uh, looking for uh, the best optimized uh, solution. So, for example, in this uh, second variant, uh, there is just change in the cross-section uh, thickness of these tubes. This can be easily done by adding a new cross-section like this way. And there is a third variant uh, when looking for uh, the best design that would you know, stick to the philosophy behind this project with the segmentation that would um, help the whole project, its erection, its, um, its uh, production. So to keep some kind of a general way of uh, detailing these two thousands of, of uh, joints and connections. So this third variant is with the uh, inserted plate well, welded between the uh, main tube of the of the truss connection. And then what you told me that you basically analyzed all these variants and uh, here I have just one slide as a conclusion of this. Uh, here you can see these three, its results against the code checks of Eurocode. Um, we can see all those three pass, it, pass the code checks for uh, selected load combinations. What is interesting here, and this is uh, for me another great idea uh, within this project, and this is how well the, the software served, is that the, you know, in face of thinking, uh, maybe um, it's not sure, uh, it's not obvious uh, that having keeping the most simple um, approach would allow uh, the, all these joints to pass the code checks and, and be implemented. So, so probably there's a you know way to to try the more kind of stiff or more safe design that's on the right side. But uh, this is kind of proof study. That, that shown that uh, it's not necessary to to uh, complicate this detail with adding extra plate inside. Still, you can see it would uh, lower the stresses in the tubes, as of course the uh, the, the highest stress is in the most left variant. But still, uh, you can see it passes the code checks, and this is very uh, very okay to to use it right still we can see some um plastification some small plastification this is variant so um how did you adam conclude this small study uh yeah after that after all these uh um comparings we um uh, choose the the middle option when we where we had this uh uh, 20 uh, millimeters diameter because it is, is only a small segment and it, it's the part of the uh, the assembly or the part of the joint uh, and it, it's easy it was easier to to have a full uh, uh, joint instead of having plates for instance and yeah uh, we also collaborated with the uh, manufacturer the, the, with the fabrication and uh, the the middle option was chosen mm -hmm. after all. So it was at one side easy to uh, produce and on the other side more safe yeah, than the, also, uh, yeah. the weakest one, right? Yeah, so, so it was quite obvious to be honest. To mm -hmm. be Great. So this is for, um, let's say, the star joint uh, proof study. Uh, and how Idea Sterica helped in this process. And then as a second example, I've got this uh, tubular end plate, or maybe tubular splice as we can call it. 
and <clears throat> that was another uh, there was another space for uh, looking for uh, the best uh, design for optimization, which is uh, which can be very well done in Idea Statica connection. <clears throat> so let me show you how this can be done. Let's say I am at the beginning. I have just imported uh, these tubes from my Consteel model. So I've got these these uh, the topology cross-section imported and I've got all the load effects imported. In this case it's about uh, 137 uh, load effects, so sets of internal forces acting on these tubes from all the load combinations. And the task is to uh, produce the design and try to optimize it. So let me guide you through uh, very uh, very quick modeling of this detail. So how you can do this, how to model this. So let's start with an operation plate to plate. This is automatically produced in some shape and we can just edit this, change the parameters, uh, the bolts are already set SM27 10.9 and we'll change the radius, number of bolts and turn off the welds here. The bolts are now hiding inside and let's continue. This time I'll use stiffening plate operation. That would be the end plate of uh, the both tubes. So again, I'm starting with uh, 40 millimeters thickness. I'll change to circle, 122 radius. Uh, now this is inside, so I have to rotate it. We have it as a plug-in for the tubes. And <clears throat> now I will use a cut operation to shorten this tube by a plate, which I have just produced, SP1. This is the one. And of course, I'll choose uh, butt welds in this case, because this is produced in the workshop. So <clears throat> now for the other side, I'll take advantage of the copy function. Uh, my favorite function in Idea Statica Connection Oh, sorry, this is a mistake. The minus should be here in the X direction to produce the plate in this place. And I'll copy uh, the operation for this member and this second plate as well. So this is already looking better. So let's continue with this um, inside plate in the shape of a cross. So I'll basically add another stiffening plate. Again, I'll change the thickness, change uh, its dimensions, 120, 120. Now I need to rotate it a bit, 45 degrees. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong, uh, wrong angle. This will be rotated around the X axis, of course. Good, and now, I will cut it and weld it at the same time using the cut of plate operation. So simply select this plate and I will be cutting by another plate first. Um, the end plate, change the thickness of weld to 13 millimeters. Oh, sorry, it's 10 actually. And uh, Another copy of this operation and I'll just change to the other opposite end plate. Here it disappeared, but it's just because uh, I'm, by default I've chosen the wrong uh, surface of the plate. So I'll choose the negative surface and I've got it in place. All right, now the same for the other side. Same. Uh, operations. So I, again, just copy them and uh, um, 
use the negative volume in here, a negative surface, and use the other end plate and use a positive surface. Good. Now the uh, last part the place that are uh, perpendicular so something like this but I need to cut all of the these four small plates and weld them inside so now again it's another set of uh, copies of the cut operations uh, <clears throat> and setting them in the for the right surfaces so this one and the negative surface and the third for the middle plate. The same for the lower one. I'll just copy the predefined and just change the plate that I'm cutting. And again, the surface. And now the same for the other side. So again, copy. So you can see this is a lot of, lot of cutting, lot of copying operations but and the time is running but still we are having like something i don't know like three four minutes and we're nearly finished okay and the last one last operation and the final cut is this one. Okay, change the surface. Good, so this way uh, using this copy operation, uh, copy feature, uh, this just, um, you know, then the operation uh, remembers all the settings like weld size, weld position and so on so we don't have to set it again and again so in a couple of minutes i have designed such a connection such a detail which looks simple but it's not that simple in terms of code checking right uh, imagine doing this by hand calculations uh, analyzing code checking all these welds and so on all these plates so what i will do now uh, I will save your time by not analyzing all 137 load combinations, but I will calculate just one and <clears throat> and see about the results. This calculation now takes a couple of seconds longer than, or let's say more standard connections with open cross sections. This is because for uh, the closed cross sections like tubes and SHSs and so on, um, Idea Statica connection uses another solver with the geometrically nonlinear uh, stress strain diagram. So <clears throat> this is more uh, more demanding on the computational time but still oh no. we're done in reasonable time so with this detail and this let's say worst uh, load combination or set of internal forces that i have for this detail i have just designed and co-check it uh, you can see about for example how the um, Uh, 
how the strain looks like and select these most uh, most stressed weld. If I click on this in the 3D screen, I can um, take a look at the diagram of the stress and see uh, there is plastification uh, occurring and the plastic redistribution of the most uh, stressed elements, which are these three, into the neighboring towards uh, the inside of the connection. And I can, of course, uh, take a look at the uh, Kocek equations according to Eurocode. I can uh, maximize this and take a look at all the numbers included. So I have full control of uh, what's going on regarding the Kocek. Um, so now, Adam, you you then try to, you know, optimize or use more uh, variants, right? Changing uh, thicknesses and, and so on. Yeah we, had, yeah, we had a lot of versions with different uh, plates uh, thicknesses um, at the cross and at the, at the end plates also. Uh, this is only, uh, I think this is the final version after all uh, that you got here. But yeah, we begin with uh, smaller, like, that you're modeling right now we began we thought that uh, around 20 or 30 millimeter uh, plates would be enough but yeah after all we uh, use a uh, more uh, with larger the, 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 yeah. yeah but yeah we had a lot of versions yeah mm -hmm. also of course the the segmentation and the economy of the production uh, take apart right had a big role so you had to consider this yeah it was really important to use uh, only a few types of these joints so even mm -hmm. if it's uh, not necessary in everywhere of the point of structural point of view we we use uh, this type of node uh, at uh, almost every uh, splice connection mm -hmm. so not everywhere obviously but uh, yeah we had this uh, reason behind this death. Mm -hmm. Yes, so you, you could save a little bit more material but uh, it would you know costs much more. Yeah, in, it, in the... yeah it really depends on the on the yeah, this, mm -hmm. side it of just the, makes sense. How, how, how long it takes to realize a lot of types of joints instead of having only one and mm -hmm. with a lot of material yeah it, I think it's it's always a, a good question. The mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, yeah. To to hit the the borderline, right? The, the nice spot yes. between the uh, economy of saving material and the economy of the production and erection. Good. So, yeah. and just mean in the meantime, uh, what I did is that I um, <clears throat> changed the thickness of these uh, four end plates from 40 to 30 millimeters and recalculate it just to uh, demonstrate how easy it is to uh, change any parameter and, and make uh, another variant and, and recalculate it and, and see about the results. Of course, it was, it would, this would take more time calculating all the uh, load combinations, but it's still kind of easy to handle. And um, okay, so with this, I am actually coming to an end. Uh, this is what I wanted to demonstrate to you, uh, what Adam and his team, uh, this was, let's say, very small part of the job that they did. <laughs> or I wanted to highlight uh, the nice mm, points or the nice thinking that they, um, they used. Good. Um, so let me yeah. conclude this. Uh, I will I will just uh, say a few words at the end. Uh, so after the webinar, please fill uh, the short survey that will arrive in your screen. The recording of today's webinar will be um, tomorrow in our support center or 
in our YouTube channel. You can get, of course, the free trial version on our web page and uh, feel free to browse our support center for more uh, webinar recordings and more materials, case studies and so on. Uh, please uh, feel free to sign in for the upcoming webinars. In April 28th will be <clears throat> the release webinar. That means we are going to release a new version of Idea Statica 21 with new features and I will be introducing them there. And in May, there will be uh, Idea Statica uh, webinar for concrete applications. This is still in preparation. And uh, for those that want to get skilled uh, in designing of steel connections in general, and of course, uh, in Idea Statica connection application, there is the campus uh, course online that you can um, sign in for. So get more information at the website. So we're coming to an end. Uh, I have maybe one last thought uh, as a conclusion. This is uh, time to time discussed as a, in the structure engineering community. Um, Sometimes we are, let's say, we structure engineers are perceived as uh, we are doing some, you know, job in the offices which looks boring. We're just calculating some numbers and maybe uh, drawing some lines, and, and nobody knows what's what's going on actually. And <clears throat> but the fact is, and this is the the great proof that Adam uh, showed us. This job is one of the most exciting uh, and adventurous things uh, <laughs> in the in the men's society, I would say, and and I would like to uh, admire this and and keep in mind that we are doing great service for the society and we are really do a great thinking, um, you know, overcoming problems in and and so on so adam uh, thank you very much for this uh, i hope you feel the same and and i yeah. uh, i would say you, you, you should be very proud yeah you should be very proud doing this and and i am proud to to have a, such a great young engineers uh, in the job in the business and uh, and yeah, more more people like you are, <laughs> hopefully will come and are among us, of course. So thank you very much uh, thank for you. coming today. I wish you the best luck and all the best in your future projects and in your life as well. And hopefully we'll meet again in some time um, with your maybe another project right yeah i hope to and uh, also all the all the best okay thank you very much yeah, thank, thank you for your time and thank you for the opportunity thank you thank you you uh, attendees for coming to today's webinar and uh, have a great rest of the day bye bye bye